live from New York City, it's theCUBE. Covering Lenovo Transform 2.0. Brought to you by Lenovo. Welcome back to theCUBE, everyone. We are here at Lenovo Transform in New York City. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, along with my co-host, Stu Miniman. We're joined by Laurel Lotrello. She is the VP Data Center Group Services here at Lenovo. Thanks so much for coming on theCUBE. Thank it's your first you. time on the show. Yes, thank you for inviting me. Welcome. So we're talking to you today about DevOps and blockchain, mm. two of our, of our favorite topics here on theCUBE. Um, Let's start by talking about DevOps in general, about sure. how much it has transformed the way, uh, the way we test and monitor and deploy new kinds of technology, and then add blockchain to this. I mean, tell our viewers a little bit about what you do. Sure, so DevOps has absolutely transformed many companies. The companies I've talked about today at Transform, all three of them in the past two years have doubled their stock price. Imagine being able to double your stock price. And some have gone almost to triple. And they've done it by being able to go to market very fast and get what they want out in market and then adjust to the market as market demands change. And they're using both agile software development along with setting up instant infrastructure and combining those techniques and the methodology and culture that goes on top of that to have small teams focused on business outcomes, and that is, in summary, the DevOps process. Yeah, I, I love that. I mean, Rebecca and I love, love talking about the cultural piece, and we know a lot of times, you know, the, the technology piece is the easy part, and networking, it's the, you know, it's the things upper in the stack, it's the people and processes and politics uh, that where we, where we get tough. Uh, if I knew we were talking about DevOps, I wouldn't have worn the tie today, right? Mm. Um, so, yeah. you know, talk, how is Lenovo transforming internally, and how are you helping customers that, you know, are digging into this kind of process? Sure, sure, I, that's a really good point. DevOps is more of a mentality than a methodology. The methodology's great, but we work with our customers to ensure that they have the right project, that they have the right culture, and that they've gone through change management process they need to get everybody on board to a new way of thinking about driving their business. And we've done that internally with our blockchain process. So we've implemented blockchain in our supply chain in three different areas, and they started as tiny proof of concepts and we just keep iterating and building on it like a typical DevOps model so that we're getting benefit from it and we're starting to see it. Right, so you're using yourself as a case study absolutely. here. Absolutely. And, and, and just, can you explain a little bit to you know, our audience, a lot of times they're going to hear blockchain and they're going to think Bitcoin, so sure. maybe explain, we, we understand that there's, there, it, it's, you know, there's relationship, but it's not the same at all. Sure, you know? sure. So one of our blockchain processes, we work with our suppliers, and we use it for supply demand forecasting. If anyone knows how supply demand forecasting works, typically, by the time the person gets the information, the information's old. And something's happened in the market and it's changed. Well, with blockchain, you have access instantly to the exact same information. So you're working on the same level and the same basis, and it makes it transparent and clear to everyone. One of the other places we've used it is in software, so software licensing credits. So we don't want to pay inventory costs for software licensing, so we're able to use blockchain so that when our users start using the software, then we start paying for it. And it saves a ton, and everybody's aware of what's happening because of the blockchain. You were talking about the right mindset mm. for DevOps. Can you describe what, what you mean by that? Oh, sure. A lot of IT teams still operate under We've got a milestone to hit, and then we've got another deliverable, and we have another milestone. With DevOps, what you're doing is you're having a very small group of people with a business outcome, which is extremely different. So you, you want to take your time to quote process and cut it in half. That might be the business outcome that you're aligning your DevOps group to. And then they figure out exactly how to get there. It's very different than planning up front and saying, I need this released in the US by this date because a lot of times by the time you get there, it's not the outcome you really wanted. And so how, when you, when you talked about yourself as a case study here, mm -hmm. how would you describe the Lenovo team and how, how everything changed and how the iteration process worked and, and whether or not you had to win over any skeptics? Oh, sure, and there are a ton of skeptics just on DevOps itself and then obviously there are more on blockchain <laughs> because it, it's so foreign, it's such a foreign concept. 
but we've started by just getting small groups of people to work together in that type of environment so that they get it and understand it and realize that the potential security risks are not as threatening as you might think because there's a DevSecOps security process. And then once they realize that you can align on business outcomes and you can accomplish so much more by bringing something to market faster, they start to realize, oh, I can keep making this better. And we've gotten you know, small teams, grassroots efforts involved to start doing that. So we obviously we've heard from Lenovo many times that you know, service levels and you know, how you're measured by customers, uh, Lenovo does, does very well. Mm -hmm. So first of all, congratulations. Thank you. But, you know, I guess the, the, the question is, you know, is it enough? And of course, mm. it's, it's a piece of the overall puzzle, so maybe help explain how the, you know, support and service fit into the overall story as to how you not only maintain customers, but win new customers. Yes, uh, it, it is not enough. My service practice, my aspiration is to drive a complete effortless experience for the customer, meaning every single time they engage with us, they do not have to put any effort forward. When you start thinking about your processes internally backwards and you're looking at it from a customer point of view and thinking what effort did they have to put in, it drives a very different mindset and it shifts people to think about doing the process very differently. So we're thinking about things like entitlement. Well, the customer doesn't get any value out of entitlement, so how do we make it go away? And how do we make all unnecessary steps go away so that we can continue to maintain that high customer side? Yeah, it's interesting, I think back, you know, I'll date myself, 20 years mm. of my career when I was like meeting with, you know, I was out in the field dealing you know, with customers. Customers love me because I took care of them. Yes. You worried you become the Maytag repairman? You know, they don't even have to <laughs> see you, they don't have to know you. It's like, they'll be like, certain people I talk to, it's like, wait, who's that Lenovo? Oh wait, those are all those machines I have everywhere that I didn't even think about. That's so, how, how do you balance okay. that? Yeah. There, there is so much going on right now yeah. in tech between machine learning and IoT and edge computing that we have a place. And that place should be providing value and driving business outcomes for our customers, not in repairing their machines. In, in talking, going back to the culture, because this is just where I love to, to be, mm -hmm. but we heard in the main stage so much about Kirk and YY talking about these points of pride for this company is this customer centricity, but also being seen as, a, as an ethical, um, as a sustainable company, as, as, as lauded for its social conduct. I mean, how does that feel when you're on the inside of Lenovo? And, and I mean, how, how does that feel as an employee? I, I've, I've talked to a lot of companies in the past 15 years I've been with Lenovo, and I can truly say we're one of the only companies that acts globally and we look at a diverse set of opinions, and that to me is really valued because when you're starting to try to see the elephant from every single angle, you get a better outcome. And every time I think about what's going to happen with this company, I know that foundation of thinking about things globally and looking at it from our entire customer set makes us a truly unique and different company. That's a great point. Maybe, do you have any examples or something you can say? Because you know, there's lots of multinational companies out there, but not that many that are truly global. Yes. So, so our Lenovo leadership team, they meet every quarter. They purposefully choose a different city to meet in every quarter and a different continent. And when they do that, they go and immerse themselves in the culture of that continent so they get that flavor. And then we ensure that our board members and our LEC is a makeup of different nationalities and different perspectives. That alone gives you that tension to think about things much differently. Where a lot of our competitors and a lot of companies out there, they really do make decisions in one city and if you're not in that city, you're not really part of the decision making body of the company. Yeah, and they pay a lot of lip service to, oh no, we care about these things, but, but actually what you're saying is so important by actually yes. living that. What do you think, one of, the, one of the questions that Stu and I have, have had for all these executives is, the, the transformation story is great, and as, as we, we, we know, we know by the numbers that this company has turned the corner and is, and is really accelerating. The momentum is there, but what, what, are, what are we looking at three to five years from now? What does success really look like for Lenovo? The customers will start to see us as a customer experience company more than a product company. So you will see us transform our customer experience end to end from every contact point and even contact points within the devices. If anybody's had a chance to look at our OK Google device, they'll see that thing is based on looking at a customer experience and changing the way people use those devices. 
And it's just a simple add of a few things in technology that's made that work. Great. Well, Laura, thank you so much for coming on the show. It's thank a, it's you. It's great to have you. I'm sure you'll be back. Yes, I appreciate <laughs> it. Thank you for the time today. Great. I'm Rebecca Knight for Stu Miniman. We will have more from Lenovo Transform in just a little bit.